Hello and welcome back in the workshop for a little show and tell and a bit of mechanics thrown in. Now not long ago a uh, bloke did an episode where he showed in great detail with some good diagrams the difference between uh, roller delayed blowback and roller locked systems uh, using a book that he's got unfortunately only in German language called uh, Verschlusssysteme von Feuerwaffen and in the comments there was a question about how lever delay blowback was uh, illustrated in that book. So Bloke has very kindly scanned me the page and uh, we shall take a look at how that's illustrated and also since I happen to have one of these around we can have a look a bit um, in more detail how it's actually moving because uh, if some of you are like me diagrams are all very well but I like to see the moving parts actually at work. Right let's go and see what we've got. So here we have a close-up of the page, Modellbezeichnung Famas, so we know we're on the right one. Now curiously this um, diagram doesn't have anything to do with the Famas, but has everything to do with the Kirali M43M submachine gun, which is a bit of an obscure reference, so I don't know where Herr Danica went to find that one. However, the operating principle is still lever delay blowback, and it's all basically the same. There we have the chamber, barrel, here the receiver, there will be at some point the uh, camming surface, SK in this point, which will be usually a hardened steel insert, so you can replace it if it starts getting worn. And the bolt, the bolt carrier, and the all important lever. Usually we shall have a short arm which engages the camming surface and the receiver, and the longer arm um, inter interfacing with the bolt carrier. Now the bolt carrier uh, is substantially heavier than the bolt. Uh, if we look at the FAMAS, we have 240 grams, more or less, on the bolt, and 140 grams on the bolt, sorry, other way around, bolt carrier has 240 grams, and 140 grams on the bolt body. This means, of course, this is a much higher inertia. So, what happens when uh, you go bang, or should I say po? Um, the bolt gets thrust back, you immediately start getting rotation of the lever, uh, in the case of the FAMAS, it's calculated so that the velocity of um, the bolt carrier during unlocking is 3.6 times the speed of the bolt. And basically what you get is um, for every small increment of rearward movement from the bolt, you get a uh, very large movement of the uh, bolt carrier here. And during the time of unlocking, which for the FAMAS needs 45 degree rotation of uh, the entire lever assembly, uh, this gives time for the pressure to reduce in the chamber, with the, the cartridge being supported enough, it's still being withdrawn, but just very, very slowly, so that by the time you do get the 45 degree rotation and both elements are free to go back, uh, you have reached a safe pressure in the chamber and uh, it's safe then to extract completely. And at that point, uh, the bolt and the bolt carrier have the same velocity heading backwards to complete the cycle. So I could show you what's happening on the gun. However, um, if I work the bolt, I'm actually pushing on the bolt body with the uh, cocking lever. And I'm doing this. Whereas what I showed you, uh, the force should be acting on the bolt face. So, let's take this apart even further. Okay, here we have the complete bolt assembly, bolt carrier, bolt, lever. Oh, hang on, now it's out of the action. I can't show you what it's like against the camming surface. Or can I? So here we have a little model of the breech, inspired a little by the uh, schematic in the uh, book. And um, what we have here is a uh, camming shoulder, and the breech face here, so the bolt face will come up hard against it, and an elementary recoil system. So this is the at rest position, so the bolt face, there you see with that, but it's hard up against the lip there, and the uh, short lever arm is here up against the uh, camming surface, and the system is at rest, recoil, spring is pushing the uh, 
well, in the FAMAS, actually pulling the bolt carrier forward. And when we fire our shot, what happens? So I'm pushing against the bolt face now. Watch the lever. You can see it sliding backwards. And you can note, for example, if we stop here where I put the line, I get a pencil, the breech face is moved this distance. And bolt carrier has moved that distance. So I did measure it when I was doing it, and um, it's basically a three to one movement ratio in this instance. And if we carry on, then the system rides up and both parts move back together. And then if everything was perfectly aligned, everything would shoot back once I let go. Let's see what happens. Hooray! So there we have it. Now sometimes it's said that the uh, use of the lever delay blowback system in the FAMAS was a bit unusual, maybe a Gallic flight of fancy, uh, but that unfortunately is wrong because um, by the time they were designing the FAMAS, so mid 70s, uh, they'd had already uh, almost 25 years of experience with the system in this, the AA52. So we have a rather small and dainty FAMAS bolt assembly and here for comparison is a rather chunky AA52 version. Now this of course is uh, supposed to be subduing 7.5 French and actually it's still in service today as the uh, ANF1 in 308 on uh, light vehicles and such. Um, so obviously it's comparatively bigger. However, it's uh, when you compare here, the difference was only 100 grams. Um, here you have a difference of 400 grams between the uh, bolt head and the bolt carrier. Uh, the other difference is that the um, lever is now asymmetrical and on the side. So I'm going to take it apart. A teeny tiny firing pin. Here we have the lever, which then acts then sideways. So this short arm pushes against the camming surface in the receiver and the long arm then pushes against this surface right here. And actually I can show you this inside the receiver. It works quite well. So for convenience, I've removed the top cover, feed tray and the barrel. And uh, here you can see the uh, camming surface. It's a pin that's in perpendicular to the receiver that's inserted in there and uh, pinned in place. And uh, now I shall use this to try and make this work. It's got a pretty stiff recoil spring, so I have to give it a... There you can already see there, as soon as you start moving, the uh, bolt carrier starts to move. But it'll be exactly the same system. Now you can see there, the proportional distance between uh, the bolt face and the bolt carrier. Oof. There we go. And off it goes back. There you can see the coming surface in there. And so on. Now, interestingly, this is uh, one of the rare French, French firearms where the patent was published. Well, A, the patent was published at all, but published before the firearm came out. Here is a copy of uh, patent FR949937 by uh, a uh, Emile Martin from uh, 11.05, 25th of June 1947, in which you see exactly the same uh, lever system. So here it's also supposed to be on the side and um, 
you have this then lever with a very short, in this case a tiny, tiny lever, and a very long one, and with the uh, inertial mass here, which is asymmetrical. So here what they've, uh, what they've done is they've put the mass in line with the bolt face. Um, but interesting to note is that this one here looks very similar to the uh, FAMAS lever. So uh, maybe it stayed in the back of the mind of the FAMAS designers. So there we have it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked this little uh, excursion into uh, lever delay blowback systems. And um, there will be some further vids on both the FAMAS F1 and the AA52. So uh, for those yearning for more info, it will be on the way. So uh, that just leaves me to uh, thank you once again. And thank you also to our Patreon supporters for uh, letting us have access to all this cool gear. And uh, see you again next time. Bye.